Hey, 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 guys. It's me, Miss Mary, again. Just thought I'd make a quick little video. Just thinking, you know, taking care of uh, things I need to do and getting a head start on some of the projects I've started. But, I, and I know I've talked about this before. I know I have in this on a video, but sometimes... I feel like I need to refresh it for myself and anybody else that care. But um, I was thinking about things that happened and why it happened and so many things you thought were meant for you and it wasn't. And then it's gone. And I said, well, well, did I do the wrong thing? Why don't I have this thing now? I, a case in point, I was thinking about Oh, oh, it's a long story, but I end up having to uh, file a divorce with my husband real quick, my ex-husband, because he was trying to cheat me out of his retirement. I mean, $300,000. He had forged my name on his retirement thing, because in the state of Texas, uh, you can't, a man or a woman cannot retire unless his wife signs a retirement paper, so... This boy had like a $300,000 retirement thing. And I had been calling. He worked for Southwest Bell then. And I call every day. Uh, has he filed for his retirement? And these people, no, Miss Childs, we can't tell you anything. It's about his retirement. You'll have to ask him. I would call every other week, if not every week, because I knew that's what he was going to do. And I don't know. One day, I was riding... Down a major thoroughfare with a, uh, a person in the car. And I was eating an ice cream cone. And a bucket of bird shit. Just like somebody. And I wasn't at a red light or nothing. Just pay y'all in my face on my glass on my ice cream. So much bird shit. I had to pull over and wipe my glasses and stuff. I was I had to go home. And the girl that was with me, she said, Ooh, Mary, somebody's getting ready to shit on you. You better check yourself. I rushed home, changed clothes, and went back to the shop. I said, I have never, I, you know, birds will shit on you when you're outside, but I'm driving a whole bucket all in my mouth and everything. So I said, I'm going to call Southwest Bell one more time. I dialed the number. Because uh, <laughs> everybody that I would call, it'd be white women, older white women. No, we can't give us that information, blah, blah, blah. So I called that day, and this girl said, uh, black girl, this is Keisha. Uh, Williams, how could I help you? And I said, oh, my God, I finally got a black woman. Maybe she'll understand. Told her my story. And this is what she said real quickly. Um, I could lose my job for telling you this, but Mr. Mr. Towns has already filed for his retirement. And if you want to get half, your half, you got to file for a divorce today. Have a nice day. I said, What? And she hung up real quick. We weren't on the phone that long because she was not supposed to tell me this. But Keisha told me. That day, I got on the phone, found a lawyer, another black lawyer that was willing to help me. He said, come in my office. I rushed. It was about a 30-minute drive, but I rushed to his office, got to his office about 4 o'clock. He sent his clerk down to the um and I just clerk his assistant to the courthouse. This is a Friday. The courthouse to file an injunction on this this on this money that my ex husband was about to get uh, an injunction, so he couldn't get it. So they blocked this money, three hundred thousand dollars. Can you imagine this man's gonna do me like that? So they got it in there, and blocked it. Do you know he's supposed to get? He supposed to been uh, go to his account and get this money on Monday, but he couldn't get it. This man called me that uh, Tuesday. He was livid, and I just didn't know if he was gonna have me killed or nothing. But he was doing, you know, he was in that dope scene, so I know he owed somebody a lot of people money. You know, man, I get my my, my check. I'm gonna have a lot of money, and I'll be able to pay you this and that. But my son said, Mama, uh, we got a crew that's watching out for you. So you go on about your business because we know he mad. And he really was mad about that money because I'm taking half of it. 
but I'm telling this story to tell this part. I guess my little 150000 whatever, and I ended up taking, I think it was about 10000 of it on and paid down payment on the house because I was living in a little raggedy shack. You know, he said, well, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get that. So I guess me a nice house. And in the meantime, here's some other things working in my life. I'm dealing with drugs and, and writing my diary. All this is going on at the same time. So I'd been drug free for about two, seven years, but still I'm afraid of relapse. I was, I had nighttime come, I was restless. And some, my the spirit said, you've been off drugs for over six years. Why are you still afraid? And I told you to write in a diary, just keep writing. So I keep writing and daylight come, I feel like I made it. But as a character in the book, well, she wasn't even a character, but let me see how that, that went. I moved in this house, and this girl that I met was on drugs real bad, and she was playing with God. She's a minister, and she would help people on drugs, and then she would be back on the drugs herself. I see she's just playing with people, and I would help her sometime in her little rallies and things, but I just knew she wasn't any good for me, so... I did a disappearing act on her, real good one. I hadn't seen her in three, four years, and she would try to reach me, and I would, you know, just avoid her. I did a good job. Okay, so I buy this house at the bottom of a hill. So one day, I decided to go up the hill to go to the drugstore, up the hill, rather than go all the way down the hill. So I get up the hill at the drugstore. Who but I see? I run into her. I ain't seen this woman in over almost five years, almost. Oh, she was so glad to see me. And why did you run away? And I couldn't find you and this and that. I said, I'm, okay, thanks, okay. I'm, you know, I'm glad to see you. Well, where you live? I told her, I said, I live right down the hill. And she said, oh, I live further up the hill. We live close together and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to come see you. And I said, oh, and write your address. She wrote hers. And we were, I won't, we were in walking distance from each other. So I was saying, oh, my God, that's the last person I want to see. So I get on back to the house, and I tell my son, Tony, that I ran into him. He said, Mama, you know that girl is bad news, so you be careful. She don't want to get you back off on that shit. There you'll be. I said, no, I'm going to be careful, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, in about a week or so, she started coming down to my house, and I started going up to her house. She and her husband were running some kind of adult uh, for living thing, you know how people you make money if they sick or uh, got mental problems, you get a check for letting them live in your house. I forgot what they call it, but anyway, she was running that, and we started doing hanging out more. But I noticed strange, and she just act funny. I see she acted just like she acted when she was on drugs. I said, I believe she's still messing with that shit. So anyway, I was doing good. Now steady writing in my book and. But still afraid of this dope. Just scared of relapse. So there was a time where she came to my house one Sunday morning. She was drunk as a skunk. And I was busy at sewing because I had moved my shop to this nice big house. And had a nice big garage. And that, my customer base was still pretty good. So, But anyway, somehow or another, she says, uh, Mary, I got to have me some... Uh, alcohol or something and I said well you know liquor store closed so we decided to go and go to the bootleg and I just don't know why I did that just surrender totally that whole day long story short and this girl name is Mary too we were riding and she found the bootleg house she got her whiskey or whatever she wanted and then she said uh I got to have me some dope I said Mary no we're not gonna do that today uh-uh I, I know so, but the funny thing about it, she was driving. So here I am. I left, gave control. So she went by the dope house, got the dope. And I'm saying, well, I don't care what she do. I'm not going to do anything. But the thing, and the, the significance in this, when I let her drive, I gave up the power. That's the thing. I, I was thinking about that today. I said, Dow, why did I take my car to the bootleg house? But anyway, so 
we sitting at her house. She went and bought dope and stuff. And we had chicken, fried chicken and something. Anyway, so she set up the pipe. And those of you who have been there, you know, she set up a pipe. And the next thing I know, she says, you take some. And mind you, we hadn't done this stuff in almost six years or more. I don't know. I get my years of six and a nines. I don't know why. Is that uh, dyslexia when it's a six, I inverted to a nine. It might have been nine years, but I don't think it was that long. I say six years. So anyway, I surrendered. And do you know, I took the pipe and I lit it. And when I sucked in that first, that suck, I knew what was going to happen. I expected it. But then I watched the whole thing, the whole part, how you're going to feel and everything, and how you get this rush and you get this feeling like you're going to have diarrhea, your bowels are going to go. I, I knew every step. So I said, I'm going to sit here and examine myself, and and I did that. And it took me about 20 almost 30 minutes to come down off of that one hit. So I'm sitting there, and I was mad at myself. I said, God, why did I do that? And I said to myself, well, I did this, but I don't want it anymore, and I see what this stuff is. It's the same stupid feeling. It's just the same stupid thing. So I came down enough, and I said, I'm finna go. And she said, Mary, don't go. Don't go. Take another hit. I said, no, baby, I had enough. I'm finna go. And I was sitting, and I said, well, I knew how to get home because we didn't live that far, so I just started walking down the hill. And I got back to the house, and when I got there, I had a big, long porch, but I felt so defiled and so whatever. I just didn't even want to go in the house. I guess I was disappointed. So I sat on the porch, and my son came home. home. It was getting kind of late in the evening. He said, what you doing out here on the porch? I I had tears in my eyes, and I told him what happened. He said, are you going to get on that stuff again? I said, no, baby. It's just like I just had to go and see if it had changed. I said, it ain't changed the same stuff. I said, I ain't going to fool with that no more. He said, I tell you what, you know she coming back. She ain't through. And he said, now you you writing this book. We'd already was decided that I was making a book, but I told him I didn't know how the book was going to end. He said, now, this is the end of your book. You're going to have to write this woman, Mary King. You're going to make her a character in your book. And you that's how you're going to finish this story. I said, really? He said, yeah. She's the ending of the story. You've been fighting and running from this dope. And here she come to take you back. And you actually had to find back that day, today, when you smoked that stuff. I examined her. I said, well, that's so right, man. So she became the char- uh, character in the book, one of the major characters. So I said I'll let to say that when I was examining myself today about why did I have to I buy this house and spend $10,000 on it, and then I, I end up having to sell it because I end up hurting myself and the, the upholstery thing that I was working with, it started going down. So I wasn't making enough money to clear house payments and everything else. I said, well, shoot, I got to get out of this house. So I sold it and got the same amount of money, maybe $2,000 more than what I put in it. So I said, it wasn't nothing lost, but I, I was sitting there why did I live there? The boy says to me, you needed to be there to meet up with Mary King again. I said, really? The thing I was running from she was the, uh, the item or she was the whatever to take me back to what I was running from. And I had to be there at that time at that house to walk up that hill. I mean, not walk up the hill, to meet her at the drugstore. Because like I told, I told you, I was running from her and I did a good job because I knew she was just a bad influence. And I thought I was doing a good job staying away from her. And here she come again. So that was meant to be for me to be in that place in time and just like the thing with uh, me riding down the street and a flock of birds shit all on me and the girl in the car telling me somebody gonna shit on me and even the phone call I made to Southwestern Bell and a girl named Keisha answered the phone 
So that's all in the making. And, you know, for anybody that's, I know people do that. Because, you know, sometimes you think you have losses and, and you wonder why, well, why did I not make it with this? And why did I lose this job? And why did this man leave me? Or why did this woman leave me? Or why did... I, I lose my child or my dog or my this. You know, things that you, you know, you're just perplexed about. But it's all in the making of us and the foundation. And sometimes you think about a house and you look at an old house. And, and when it was new and wasn't like that, next thing you know, especially in the state of Texas, you got cracks and your foundation is falling. So sometimes you have to go through these things in kind of like a repair and, and fix her up and trying to make you whole and well and to make move you from one place to one spot to the next one. That's what it's all about. But that's what I, I thought about today. But for anybody that need to, if you got that on your mind, why did this happen? And that's all in the universal plan. And I guess you just don't want to start acting silly because you think you lost something or I'm going to go kill him because he took my girlfriend and she left me. And it's, it's all in the script. You know, sometimes when you're, you're in, because this, this is a show. This is a stage that we're doing. And if you don't read the whole script, and, and we are not, we don't get to know the role that everybody plays. But because we are, we are responsible for our lines in the play. So a lot of times you just don't know what role they have in it and, and you don't, we don't even know the end. So you just act out your part and, and hope everything <laughs> is a good ending. But sometimes it's not. But, you know, it's another play coming. But anyway, <laughs> I've been on here for, uh, what, 17 minutes. That's enough. I'm going to get off of here and say goodnight to you guys, okay? Bye-bye.